Welcome. We have an addendum, a little brief addition to our conceptual design example, number two. This is from the University of Washington. I'm Greg Hay. Let's remind ourselves what we just looked at. This is the Pike Place Market Co-op of Artists. We're going to fix a minor flaw in the previous design. I can play this off and say this was intentional. Reminding ourselves that this is a collection of artists that are creating products. They're musicians and manufacturers, assemblers of jewelry, t-shirts, CDs, homemade pottery, and whatnot. We've seen this. How did we complete our design? Well, first we went through, discovered all the nouns. We didn't get stuck in the, in the mud looking at the individual material nouns, such as blank CDs, blank t-shirts, blank canvases, and whatnot. We stood with a high level parent kind of generic term material. Then we can have material name. For each one of these individual products, individual material pieces, such as blank CDs, we just have a single row. Why do we approach it this way as opposed to having separate entities for each material object? Well, it's much easier to add a row in a material table than it is to create a new entity for each potential material item. Let's say we start doing lampshades or uh, coffee cups or I'm looking around the room basketball shorts. Well we get we're going to exhaust and make a very complicated database design more complex. We don't need to do that. Just add an additional row in a material table. This should make sense as we get more practice. Moving forward, I'm going to go very quickly. We chose our top level. We had five entities to begin with. Artist, product, vendor, order, and customer. We quickly added surrogate keys. We will learn what these are as we go through normalization. This is a little bit different than what the book is going to present, but we want to quickly identify our primary key for each object. We're going to fill out name and description in addition to the ID. So each table is probably going to have an ID, name, and description. Order is going to be a little bit different. We're going to slap an order date in there as well as an employee name. Then we begin to add additional data. Eh, addresses, city, state, zip, phone numbers, okay, yeah. Product type, yeah. Music type, sure, and label. After we go through the further analysis, we're going to recognize that we have additional attributes, I'm sorry, additional entities hidden as attributes. We made potentially some, I won't call it a mistake, but we, in our initial analyses of what data needs to be captured or kept, we were in a hurry and we put product type as part of product. In the conceptual desi uh, design phase, that may be exactly appropriate. Once we go through the logical design phase, we're going to look for opportunities to iron out the attributes that perhaps could stand alone. We want to manage these. We do not want to allow for typos and abbreviations, so we create new entities. So product type is going to come into being as its own entity, as will vendor type, as will material, as will phone. These are in different tables music type in the artist table, as well as label. All of these will become separate entities and also employee. We analyze the relationships. We look for how many occurrences of one will appear for each occurrence of the other. So for example, one artist can create many products. The same product is created by one and only one artist. And the relationship between a product and a customer is one product can be purchased by many customers. The same customer can purchase many products. We created the order table to account for the many-to-many -many relationship. However, upon further analyses as well, one product, such as a homemade candle, can be on many orders. Not the exact serial number product, but the product name. We may have a hundred homemade candles. Each one will have the same product ID. 
same product name and so one product can appear on many orders the same order can have many products anytime we have a receipt from like Safeway or QFC some grocery store we're gonna look at the receipt we should see a quantity for each product and a price extended I have done that here by creating product or order underscore product we take these two foreign keys and we make them a composite primary key. There's not two primary keys here, there's one primary key that covers two columns. We added additional entities for material, vendor type, music type. We're going to break out employee as well. I'm going to go relatively quick through here. We've seen this before in the previous recording. We add phone and phone type, customer type, label comes out. We are going to make customer phone, the relationship between customer and phone. One customer can have more than one phone. The same phone can be for many different customers. If we have people living communally in the same house, the same or, uh, professional organization, or a different phone type, as we can see here, we learn more when we put data into our database that phone type is not going to describe phone it's going to describe customer underscore phone once we have a relationship between a customer and a phone we need to label it and that'll be a phone type such as home phone desk phone cell phone emergency phone fax number so the cell phone for one customer could be the emergency contact for a second customer and we just continue to fill out the data. This is where we have a flaw. I noticed two flaws. First of all, I didn't put the quantity in order underscore product. We just have the, com uh, the cross section between product and order. I brought in the foreign keys successfully. I made a composite primary key successfully but I never put quantity in there so that needs to have quantity perhaps we put price in the product table but where I have a more disturbing flaw was between a product a vendor and material let's see how this developed as we went through we changed in the bottom right where phone type described customer phone then I created a product type entity made the vendor and material relationship many to many so we have material underscore vendor in the upper right I made the artist and the music type relationship many to many we created the employee table and we filled out the employee table we filled out the product type table the artist music type table but I left vendor having a, I'm sorry product having a relationship with vendor and then vendor having a relationship with material through the material underscore vendor table I'm gonna argue at this time that product does not have a relationship to vendor it has a relationship with material underscore vendor and that is because we want to track which material from which vendor was used by a particular product to be created we will jump to Visio and we will finish this out. I'm going to put the microphone down and we will fill this out in real time. So this is the same design that we had. I, I had a relationship between product here and vendor. I have now put vendor on the opposite side, brought the material vendor, material underscore vendor entity closer to product. We're going to have a new entity here called product material underscore vendor this is key to fleshing out some potential mistakes it's very easy. so what how do we how do we populate product underscore material vendor well we pull in the primary keys from the participating entities well it's easy to pull the primary key from product that's product ID it's a little bit more difficult to pull the primary key from material underscore vendor. Why? Well, it's a composite primary key. What do we need to do? We need to make the primary key from material vendor and make that a surrogate key like we did for most of the other entities. Let's take a closer look. I'm in Visio. 
So I'm going to go to the columns here. Now, instead of having these as a composite primary key, I'm going to make a brand new surrogate key. I'm going to call this material vendor ID. That will also be an integer, and I make it the primary key. I move it up into position. Now, we still have material ID and vendor ID as foreign keys. We will have to manage the com combination of these two columns together to make sure there's no duplicates in the same manner that we were going to do that with the primary key, which guarantees uniqueness across the entire primary key, whether it's one column, two columns, three columns, or whatever. But right now we're vulnerable because we could have duplicate combinations. Let's say material ID 11 and vendor ID 74. If we have those, they should appear only together one time because we're tracking material and vendor together. This will make a little bit more sense after we go through the normalization lecture, which will be coming up shortly. But once I have to export the primary key from material vendor to go into product material vendor, I need to have a surrogate key. It is much easier to manage one column as a foreign key than it is to manage two columns as a foreign key. So I've done that. Now I will drag and drop. I highlight product. It turns red. I grab the I right click and I drag and then I drop it in the destination table the foreign keys show up I will go over this if people have questions I make these a composite primary key now we may have additional columns here such as price or in this case it's going to be cost this will be a money it may be numeric make that required and in the order underscore product, I wanted to have a quantity. Make that numeric. And again, this is just a very high level way of building a database. This may not be 100%, but for creating a draft ERD, it's going to suffice. Let's see if that fits. It looks like it does. I'm going to go ahead and save this. I will post this slide deck. This will now be the addendum to our previous lecture. And hopefully we have been able to follow and see how we're going to take from a basic business scenario. I'll go back to the very part, beginning part of this slide deck. We have a database design scenario and we're able to take it all the way to a logical database design that has perhaps 19, 20 tables, entities, that we can then begin coding. And we're going to learn more about that a little bit later this week. We'll go through the normalization process and recognize some of the math, some of the reasons on how I'm basing my decisions that allows us to identify and isolate the each individual object that is going to be relating to other objects. If you have any questions, please give me an email. Send me them. Send those questions to me. I appreciate everyone's time.